So in this lecture, we're going to be talking about trends and channels. So what are trends? Basically, prices move in trends. They can move in an uptrend, a side trend, or a downtrend. That's the only way they can move. So a trend is basically a direction that prices are going at. You can have an uptrend, a side trend, or a downtrend. An uptrend is basically when prices are moving up, right? And an uptrend is going to be characterized by higher highs. So if this is a high point in the price going up, and this is high price one, this is high two. So we have higher highs, and we also have higher lows, right? So higher highs and higher lows characterize an uptrend. A downtrend is when prices are going down, and downtrends are characterized by lower highs. So every time the price goes up, it the high is lower than the previous high, and lower lows as well. Then we have side trends. So side trends is basically when the price is just going in a sideway fashion. Prices often, uh, you know, continue their trend. And this is why you always hear people saying the trend is your friend or don't go against the trend or any other sayings about trends because it's actually mathematically proven that prices, when they're going in a direction, they tend to stay in that direction. So trends tend to persist. So you want to be going in the same direction as the trend and not going against it. Uh, so yeah, this is something that's in all markets. It's a technical analysis. It's part of technical analysis and it's the strongest thing in technical analysis is, is the trends. Now let's actually, so these are going to be trends. Now trends, to look at them and to make them more visible, what we usually do is we draw a trend line. A trend line is basically a line that you put to really visualize the trend, okay? And in this case, we have an uptrend line because this is an uptrend. Now, when you have something like this, what this tells you is that the price of the product you're trading is going to be moving alongside the trend. And if ever it touches the trend, it's probably going to bounce off of it and keep going in that same direction. So as a buyer, if you want to buy something, you might not want to buy it here. You might want to wait until it reaches the trend and buy it just above it because you know this is a good support for the trend and it's going to bounce back off it so you can get a good price. So if you decide to sell, let's say, on this day, well, if you bought here, you made some money. But if you bought here, you probably just sold flat. So it helps you getting a good entry. Now, why do trends like this create a, a sort of a support. And when I say support, I mean it supports the price. The price is not going below it. Well, because everybody sees this trend. You know, we have the best pattern recognition ever, humans. So when we see a chart, we recognize any type of pattern. And, you know, Google is developing very good pattern recognition softwares, but they're not better than the human eye, right? You know, I, I can put sunglasses on and trick Google in not knowing that it's not me, but, you know, you can have a, you know, a one-year-old kid and you put glasses on, he's still going to know it's you because our eyes are so good in recognizing patterns. They've evolved through millions of years. So we see those things. Now, I'm not the only one who sees it. Everybody sees it. So when you have a trend like this, a lot of people are putting their buy orders here to buy. So imagine that this, so this price here is about, let's say, let's say this is $38. Okay. If you go on the order book where there's all the buyers on one side and sellers on the other, well, you might have a few buyers for 100 coins, let's say at 39, at 38 and a half, maybe 100. But at 38, because there's a good support here, there might be so many people placing orders, so many. And then you might have, I don't know, 10,000 coins. Now, because there are so many buyers there, when sellers come in and sell, they're going to have a hard time breaking this level. They're going to have a hard time selling 10,000 coins because that's so many buyers that the price is not going to go below 38 and it's going to bounce back off of it and then go back up when buyers come in to buy more aggressively. So these supports here or the trends continue because people make them continue because people place orders and that's why it continues. So you could say it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because everybody believes that the trend is going to keep going up. So they're placing orders and because they're placing their orders to buy, 
they're making it keep going up, right? You know, so we don't know if it's exactly a self-fulfilling prophecy, if it's if it's something that has to do with, you know, emotions and uh, movement and direction or... But the fact is that trends do persist, right? And yes, there are part of it that it is a self-fulfilling prophecy because we believe it, we, we help it persist. So something to know. Now, another thing to know about trends is basically when the trend break, there's a reversal. So when you have a break of this trend line, then we could go in the other direction. So if you wanted to get out of this position and or if you were waiting for a time to get out, and it breaks the trend, well, you might say, okay, you know what? I'm taking my my profits here and I'm leaving the position because it might keep going uh, in the other direction. So again, these things are going to help us in figuring out our entry points uh, and exit points. Uh, even as longer-term investors, you could use them to help you out uh, just in your entry and exit points. So usually, things like this, trends, don't just... Uh, we don't just draw a, a trend line. We usually draw a channel because things actually move in, uh, you know, within a channel. Now, I put in here some examples of stock prices, but technical analysis is the same for crypto or any other financial product. So you have an uptrend here and you have the support line, right? And you have the upper uh, resistance line, okay? So a downtrend here and you have the support line, and you have the resistance line. So we always call the line that's above the resistance. And the line below, we call the support. Why is that? Because the line below is supporting the price. When the price touches it, it bounces off of it. So it's supporting it. And the line above is a resistance. The price cannot break over it. So very simple. So here we have the downtrend, uptrend. Again, if you're buying, you might want to buy here. If you're, you were looking to exit, well, you might say, I want to put my exit price here because you know what? It's going to have a hard time breaking it. And that could help you with your entries and exits. Uh, again, if you if it's a downtrend and then you want to maybe sell your position and it reaches here, you might say, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to sell it. It's probably not going to break over here and I might be able to buy it back lower if I want or whatnot. But usually you don't want to go against the trend and that's why they say don't go against the trend. So if you're buying something, don't buy something that's in a downtrend. Wait until it's not in the downtrend anymore and then buy it. Yeah. Side trends, and this happens when the market is moving sideways, where something is just moving in a sideways direction. If you really like the product, you can buy it at the lower uh, part of this, uh, near the support, and sell it near the resistance. Buy it near the support, sell it near the resistance. Buy it near the support, sell it near the resistance. And that would be you know, more of a trading-based approach. But again, even as a longer-term investment, you would want to buy somewhere around the support and then leave it and you know obviously if it breaks above the resistance then you know it could really keep going up uh, so yeah supports and resistances are basically those lines that we draw around the chart to help us figure out which uh, how, what price ranges are supporting the price and which price ranges are causing a resistance for the price to break over uh, we're going to see supports and resistance with, with around trends we're also going to see supports and resistance around round numbers okay so when there, there's a round number there's often going to be big supports and resistance you might have something uh, you know let's say whatever financial product called abc it's going up and it's reaching ten thousand dollars well you know what a lot of people who bought or on these prices might say i want to sell at ten thousand bucks i want to sell at ten thousand bucks so if you look at the order book of all the buyers and sellers and again buyers here sellers here you know, you're going to have some sellers at, you know, 9,000. Uh, you might have some at 9,500, 400 coins, 100 coins, 9,672 and 22 cents, you know, 500 coins. But then, you know what, at 10,000, 10,000, zero, zero, you're going to have hundreds of thousands of coins to sell. Why? Because it's a round number. And so many people send their orders at round numbers. And because there are so many orders to either buy or sell, you know, sell if it's higher price than the current price or buy if it's a lower price than the current price. There's so much demand or supply, depending on the situation, that the price is going to have a very hard time to go over it. You know, if there's a mil if there's a million shares or a million coins to sell at that price, well, you know what? I'm going to have to have buyers who want to buy all that million shares before we can move on to the next price. 
and start having transactions that pop up on the time of sales that have a higher price than the 10,000 price so we can see on the chart that higher price. So for the prices to go over that, we need buyers to execute or fill all of these orders, all of these people who have you know, orders to, to sell at that price. So what we're gonna see is very big supports or very big resistances at round numbers. If you know if the current price is, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, 5,000 here, well, you know what? There's gonna be a lot of sellers at 10,000 and there might be a lot of buyers at, you know, 1,000. And this is gonna be fractal. So you're also gonna have large amounts of orders at all round prices. So at 2,000, at 3,000, at 4,000, at 2,500. You know, at then it's gonna become even fractal. So at 2,400, 2,300, 2,200, and then at 2,250 dollars, 75 dollars. So at smaller, smaller increments, there's still gonna be you know a lot of orders compared to other prices. But you know, as these big round numbers, that's where you're gonna have the biggest amount. So when we're talking about you know a big, big, big round number. So it depends on the product you're trading. If you're trading something within the five dollar range. Well, $10 is going to be huge. $1 is going to be huge. If you're trading something around $1,000 or $2,000, well, $1,000 is going to be huge. $5,000 is going to be huge. So the nearest really, really round numbers are going to be the hugest. Other small round numbers still going to have a, a kind of support or resistance. They, ha they have a role reversal property. So when a very big round number gets broken, it uh, or when a support or resistance gets broken, it there's a role reversal. So it becomes the, the opposite. So example, if this here is a resistance, okay, and then at one point, and don't mind the wicks, right? When something like this goes up but closes below, we don't really consider this a break. Uh, we want to make sure that the candle closes above. So the closing price is above. In this situation, the candle went up, then sellers came in and started selling and went back down and closed here. So it actually closed within that range. But if, let's say tomorrow, the price goes up and the candle closes above this resistance and let's say yeah uh, let's say this resistance was just for for example uh let's say the six dollars was here this was six dollars or let's say this was a hundred dollars just for 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 this example it's a hundred dollars and everybody was like you know what at a hundred dollars you know everybody's selling and everybody's selling around a hundred bucks or at the hundred bucks because they bought it lower and it's a hundred dollars for them is is huge it should it shouldn't have reached there so then it breaks. In this situation, when it goes up, everybody who wanted to buy it, or everybody who, let's say, wanted to get out, got out here, and then everybody else who wanted to buy at a lower price are like, damn, now it's too high, I don't wanna buy at you know 105 or whatnot. So what happens is this line, which was the pre previously the resistance, actually becomes the support. Why? Because if the price goes down again, now you have all the people who wanted to buy it lower, who are, who did who now don't want to buy it at 110, 105. When it comes back to 100, in their brain it's like, oh, it's back to 100. I'll get it there now. So they'll start buying it there. Even though before they saw that 100 is too high, now they see it at a good price because it came back to that round number. So they start buying it there and then the price can't break it and goes back up. So resistances become support and same thing supports also, if they break, they become the resistance. So there's a role reversal uh, in, in all these situations. Again, even in an uptrend, if this uh, if this uptrend broke and the price went up, well, you know what? A lot of people who are buying here, when it goes back up here, they're going to start selling because they'll be like, oh, it's, it's back at that point and they'll sell. So it, it might bounce back off of it and go down. Same thing for here. If it breaks the resistance, goes up. Then a lot of people who were selling here uh, and who wanted to buy here are going to be like, okay, now it's too high. If it comes back here, then they start seeing it attractive again because it's somewhere near the prices that it used to reach and they'll buy back there. And again, it could be partially because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because everybody does that, that we have this property of role reversals, uh, but it's something that exists. So you have to be mindful of it. So these are supports, resistances, and trends and channels. Now, Let's go on TradingView and check some of that on Bitcoin and on these other cryptocurrencies. One thing to consider, though, is that because with cryptocurrencies, prices move so much, we cannot really use regular price charts. 
okay? We have to use log charts. Now, what log charts are is logarithmic price scales. Logarithmic price scales basically makes it like this. When you're looking at a chart, well, and this is a really bad chart. When you're looking at a chart and you're looking at something that went up from, let's say, a dollar up to, let's say, $10. How big of a percentage return is that? A dollar to ten dollars is ten times, so it's a thousand percent return. Now, if I have this chart here and I have here twenty dollars, thirty dollars, you know, all the way up forty, fifty, until I reach a hundred, and then I see that the price went up from a dollar to ten dollars, and then I don't know it it went to a hundred. Well, guess what? I might think that, you know, this move here is way bigger than this move. But in fact, no, going from $1 to $10 is a hundred percent return. And going from $10 to a hundred dollars is also a thousand percent return. So this move here is as big as this move here when I look at percentages. But when I look at prices in dollars, it might seem that this is way bigger than this. And in cryptocurrencies, this is one of the biggest problems because you're looking at something like Bitcoin who was trading at a few dollars and it goes to thousands of dollars and it goes to $20,000 and goes back down to $6,000. And then people can't really think of the percentages because it doesn't make sense to them. It's the, the numbers are too big and they were too small before, so they can't really see how much, if it if the direction is up or down and see the trends. So what we have to do is stop looking at price charts, which basically, uh, here, what is the definition? Logarithmic price uh, scale is plotted so that the prices in the scale are not positions equidistantly. So here we have an equivalent distance, $10, $10, and so on. Instead, the scale is plotted in such a way that two equal percentage changes are plotted as the same vertical distance on the scale. So if I had $1 here and then $10 here, that's a 1,000% return. Here I should have $1,000, $100, sorry. And here I should have 1,000. So the distance between my prices on the vertical axis is based on percentage of 10 times uh, and not on $10 uh, or, or, you know, in this situation was even nine. Not, not on $10, but 10, 10 times in percentage. And that's what we want to use, okay? So if we go here on trading view, go in charts, let's check out some of my what do I have here? Bitcoin. Okay. So let's take a look at Bitcoin and let's put Bitcoin USD and let's put it on Bitfinex because actually Bitfinex has been there for a long time. So they have a longer chart I can look at instead of just Binance. Binance is a new exchange. Well, not new. It's been there for a year and a half maybe, but uh, Bitfinex has been there for way longer. Uh, so we have a longer time frame to look at. So when I look at Bitcoin, and I'm going to look at a normal chart. Look at this. Look at this price. Let's see here. Let me just push this here a bit. Okay. So what do we have here? We have something that went up from $2,000 to $20,000, right? That's huge. But then it went from $20,000 all the way down to $7,000, $6,000. That's a huge drop. So when you look at this, can you see a trend? Can you be like, oh, this is going up or is it going down? What does it look like now? Here it looks like it's going down in huge amounts from 20,000 to seven to 6,000, that's huge. But here it looks like it's going really up. Well, you know what, what about here? Is this a big move up? Or what about here? Is this bigger than this? Well, guess what, this here, it, it, might be as big as this, it's just we can't see it. Can you really see when it went from one cent to a dollar or from a dollar to a hundred dollars? 
that would look really small compared to like going from 10,000 to 20,000. But you know what? Going from 10,000 to 20,000 is just doing 100% return. All this move is 100% return. You know? Well, you, guess what? From here to 10,000, this is not 100%, but this is 1,000%. So this is way bigger. So here too, we have big amounts. So what we need to do is at the bottom here, you see there's the log. You can look at a log scale chart. And if I click on this, you see the chart changes. Put it automatic. So it could load. You see, this is the regular chart. Okay. And if I click on log, oh, now it's different. Right? Now on the Y axis here on the side, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, well, if I am looking at a price of, let's say, uh, if I look at the difference of price of, I don't know, 300 uh, from 300, let's try and get a round number here. So it makes a little bit more sense. I'm going to try to have 100 here somewhere. So up. So the difference between 100 at the bottom here, if you can see that, difference between 100 and 130, it's 30% return. It's the same thing as going from, you know, 10, from 1,000 to 1,300, it's gonna be the same size, right? Or here, from 2,000 to 2,600 is 30% return, the same as from 100 to 130. So now we have a scale that's in percentage return, and that's what we need because you know what? It's very hard to understand and see how these cryptos are moving because they're moving so much that we're not used to seeing numbers like that. So we have to use log scales. And now that looks way better, right? And you, okay, well, look at this. You see this move here that uh, I talked about earlier? Where how, how big of a move is that? Now in percentage return, we see that it's actually a really big move. I can click here on this uh, measure measuring tape, I guess. Click at the bottom. Click at the top. Okay, so here in 67 days, this move was 1,200% return, right? So you would have made 12 times your money. You put a thousand, you make 12K in in two months. And that was a huge move. Well, that that was, you know, that was a, a big move, which is huge, right? It's just, it happened when the price was at $60. So when the price goes from 60 to a thousand, you know, it's different than when, uh, people don't realize that this is as big of a move as when it went from 600 uh, to 10,000 or something like that, right? Then we had, so this was 2014, then Bitcoin's price, you know, had a little pullback until 2016. And then we had this really nice uptrend. And now you can see that, okay, well, you know what? We might have an uptrend here, you know? How, this, is, this is going up when we're looking at a log scale. It's just, it had a really fast move up, right? Because we did have this, this scenario where it did go up in 2017 so this is 2017 so in the beginning of 2017 until 2018 which is you know the huge year that it had it went up by almost let me just put it a bit higher so almost 20,000 percent sorry almost 2,000 percent well 2,600 percent here actually exactly so in one year 2,600 percent huge amounts of returns right but then it actually went from here uh, and we're gonna get into this later i don't want to when we talk more about percentage returns and expectations but that it went down 70 percent but it went up 22,000 2600 percent before that so you have to look at perspective these are risky assets they do move a lot and the the percentage returns are crazy now you know, if you can avoid buying something at its all-time highs like this and try to buy something when it's, you know, it's at a good price, even on it from a technical standpoint, and we're going to look at more uh, more of that later, it's really helpful, you know. Again, if you're buying something, and so this is something that I just bought. Okay, so we're looking at Aeon Bitcoin, so Aeon BTC, right? So Aeon compared to Bitcoin, not on dollars, but on Bitcoins, right? 
and I'm looking at a daily chart. Okay, this is a one day chart. So each candle is daily. I'm also looking at a log scale. Now look at this. If I like this coin, and I'm not saying I like it, but if I like it, I don't want to buy it when it's in a downtrend like this. I can see the trend. Now, a downtrend, okay, uh, and again, I'm looking at it compared to Bitcoins. So what does that mean? That means before, let's say last month, buying one Aeon uh, would cost me 0 0.00019 Bitcoins, right? But you see, if I wanted to buy one here, one Bitcoin, uh, sorry, uh, if I wanted to buy one Aeon, it would cost me 0 0.0003 Bitcoins. But now I can buy one Aeon for 0 0.00007. That's a way better price. So I'd rather not have Aeon while it's going down and have Bitcoins because then I can use my Bitcoins to buy more Aeons when Aeon is at a lower price. So even though if you want to buy something, you have to look at the trend and the prices to basically see if this is the, the, the right time to buy it or not. Now, if something is in, a, in a, is in a downtrend, like we've said, you don't want to go against the trend. But look at this. This is the resistance line. And here, oh, it just broke it. So then I bought some here. So now, I, if I like it, I expect this to go up. And I'm not saying Aeon is a good coin or whatnot. Uh, I actually had a trade going on that has nothing to do with uh, from an investment standpoint. Uh, but... I did have a trade that went in here, but if from an investment standpoint, it's a good investment and you want to buy it and it breaks this type of resistance, then you do get into the position. Now, it doesn't mean it's guaranteed to go up. It could drop back, but it's way more likely to go up. Why? Because a lot of people are seeing this. A lot of people who didn't want to buy now start buying. Uh, a lot of people who were shorting, which is something outside of the scope of this course because we're not going to be shorting, we're investing, uh, might be getting out of positions, like people who are betting against it, might be getting out because now they know it could go back up. And again, this this resistance might become the new support, so it might test it and then go back up. But you would use that, and that would help you avoid buying in other situations like buying here or buying here or buying here or buying here or buying here. So buying here means I saved money by not buying earlier. So again, entry point uh, is very important. But again, always looking at log scales and not just price scales. You know, some of these things, when you look at price scales, they've moved up 4,000% and down. And I'm going to give more example of some of the other uh, uh, coins and how much they moved and uh, look a, little, a bit more on the charts when we actually get into investing, when I want to compare active investment versus passive investment, when you just hold your coins versus when you actively trade them. And then I'll be looking at some... Uh, percentages so we'll get back into that but you know that's just a, a little intro for you to understand charts because you will look at charts every time you want to buy something uh, and yeah that should be it for channels supports resistance charts uh, lock scale charts and in the next lectures we're going to start looking at a few other patterns